Hey you, do you want to be a pro musician? Do you not feel like a pro musician? Do you need 10 tips to become a pro musician? Then you are in the right place. Welcome to the official Amongst Wolves top 10 tips to become a pro musician. But before we hand over all of our knowledge to you, yes, we are in a band and we absolutely love music and love what we get to do. We have been so privileged to, pre-COVID, go on all these awesome tours all around the UK and beyond and we've played on some awesome stages and met some amazing people. But full disclaimer, we're still learning. We do not know everything. These are our top 10 tips of what we've learned on the way, but actually make sure that you're still researching this kind of stuff and seeing what other people have to say. And here's a little bonus tip for you. Make sure you go like and subscribe. But here we go. Practice, practice, practice. It is so important to be consistent with your practices so that you improve on your instrument. So you want to be practicing about six to seven times a week. You start with 20 to 30 minutes a day, and then as you see improvement, you'll, you'll want to increase that. I remember when I was practicing for my grade eight piano exam, I was practicing almost three hours a day. You want to be a perfectionist when you're practicing, and so you work on things like scales, techniques, rhythms, and learning a song until you can't get it wrong. A top tip from me is to always use a metronome. You start off slow to get that accuracy and then you increase in speed. Practicing is the only way to improve, to stand out from the crowd and to feel confident when you're performing. So do it, do it, do it, just do it. What's next, Dan? So my first top tip is to learn music theory. Now, I know it sounds really boring and all the cool kids say music theory is for dweebs, but knowing your way around your instrument from a theoretical standpoint and just being able to communicate with your band, you know, I want to play like a six, a one, a five, and a four can massively, massively help you work out writing music and playing music with other people. So learn music theory. It's really good. Even if it's really boring, you just gotta push through. It will definitely, definitely help you for sure. I promise. What's number three? Tip number three is gig as much as you can. Get experience performing live. Right now, that's not possible. In the future, it's 100% possible and definitely necessary. You're not gonna know how to prepare for a live performance if you don't know what you're missing. You'll never know what you need to improve on if you don't know what it takes to play a gig. So find somewhere that's happy to put you on, maybe even playing like one cover song, but happy to put you in a support slot with another band and get that experience. Maybe try busking, right? It's not the same as you would think, like bright lights and crazy shows. It's just people doing the shopping. At least you'll get used to playing in front of other people and you'll get used to that feeling of some people not liking what you do, but some people really enjoying it. Also, it's a great way to earn about 40p. And if you're at school, maybe ask one of your teachers, could you play like in an assembly or something? Just get that experience of playing in front of people. There is no feeling quite like it. For me, the first time playing guitar in front of people, I was like 10 in my primary school. And my first gig, I was about 13. So take it from me. The earlier you start, the easier it will be. And as you progress musically, you will also be able to progress with that live show and that live performance that if somebody sees you, they're gonna be like, I wanna check out this band. These are all ways that you can improve with your live performance. What's next? Yes, number four, musicianship. That means technique, understanding of music, and being aware of your musical context. For example, if I'm a jazz drummer playing a metal gig, that doesn't quite make sense. I've got to use different techniques and understand the different context that I'm playing musically. If I don't have the best techniques, then if I'm on stage, I'm going to look a bit unprofessional. So make sure you know your techniques, you know what is best, and you understand all of your musical surroundings. On to number five. As a little halfway point pause, we have just launched a second YouTube channel. We're putting some shorts up. And so make sure you check the link in the description below and make sure you go and subscribe. My next top tip is to practice your stage presence. You know, if you want to perform live, that can be a really scary thing. And you know, I still get scared sometimes, but you know what makes it so much easier is I've already practiced by myself away from the crowd, like trying to engage with people and trying to look cool on stage. So here's what you do. You grab a hairbrush, you go and find a mirror, you stick some banging tunes on and you mime like no one is watching and hopefully no one is watching. 
What's next? Number six is to have a goal. Make sure you know why you're doing what you're doing, what your end result is, and the steps that you need to take in order to get there. Maybe your goal one day is to play at a festival like Glastonbury, or maybe you wanna become famous on YouTube. You need to think of the steps that you need to take in order to get there. As a band, our goal, the reason why we do what we do, is because we wanna tell people about the hope that we found through Jesus Christ. See, all of us in the band are Christians and all of our lives have been changed in the best kind of way by Jesus. So Jesus chose to die on a cross and then three days later he rose from the dead because of just how much he loves you. And then because of this, he offers us forgiveness, relationship, hope, meaning, a life to the full, and promises to be with us no matter what we go through. And so we wanna share this good news with you guys. And if you wanna know more, then click the link in the description below, where you can go to a secret video and we discuss this more and you can find out what it can mean for your life. But Andy, what is number seven? Now on to tip seven, which is networking. Networking is so important to your pro musician career because it creates future opportunities. For example, if a band member was to choose between having a drummer that they know well and that they work well with, or someone they've never met before, they're always gonna choose the person that they work well with and that they know and that they've worked with before. So make sure with every opportunity you get, you're always networking and coming across well and coming across professional for future writing sessions, for future collabs, whatever it is. Make sure you network as much as you can for all the opportunities that you can get. My next top tip is to learn some basic skills in some music production software, something like Ableton, Logic, Reaper. You can start making music from your own bedroom, laying down ideas and getting some tracks together. Look, it's easy. Check it out, bass, kick drum, snare, hats, boom, you got a beat. And if a trap style be like that in your thing, don't worry, you can just lay some guitars down, it's a metal song. There you go. What's next, guys? Number nine is listen to music. Make sure that you listen to artists and genres that you love and listen to cool stuff that they do that you could bring into your own playing as well. But also make sure that you listen to genres that you don't necessarily normally listen to. You might find some really cool stuff there that you want to use as well. So go do it. And the last tip is be authentic. Learn to love what you do. Fall in love with your instrument. Fall in love with the songs you're playing. Understand the heart of what it is you want to communicate with your songs. And if it's a cover, try and understand what the artist who originally wrote it was trying to convey. Music is an amazing way to communicate. So get in touch with the message you want to communicate to the people who are going to see your live shows, who are going to find you on SoundCloud, who are going to bump into you busking on the street. Music is an unbelievable communicator. It can get across ideas that words just don't. The irony that that sentence made zero grammatical sense. The bottom line is, if you love what you do, people will find it easier to love what you do as well. Back to you, Clay. So there are your top 10 tips from Amongst Walls. Congratulations, you are now a pro. I hope it's been super helpful for you. And if you have any tips of your own, then put it in the comments below. Make sure that you check out the secret video and check out our second YouTube channel. Generic. Goodbye. Hey, it's me, Mark, from that video you just watched. Although I actually know if I was on that one. Uh, here's some videos that YouTube thinks you are going to really enjoy. But wait, 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 no, 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 don't, don't click on anything just yet. I've got one thing to say. You are so, so loved and so, so significant. It's pretty cool. I got one more thing to tell you as well. This one's from the Bible. In Romans chapter eight, it says this. I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from the love of God, not death or life, not angels or demons, not the fears about today or our worries about tomorrow, not even all the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. That is insane, right? It means that no matter your history, no matter the circumstances you find yourselves in right now, nothing in all creation can separate us from God's love that has been revealed in Jesus. So what does it mean for this love to be revealed in Jesus? Well, it means he's the practical outworking of just how enormous God's love is for me and for you too. By dying on a cross 2000 years ago, taking the death that me and you deserve. That is real love. That is true self-sacrifice. And why does he do that? Because he wants to be a part of your life. He wants to get to know you and he wants you to get to know him. All we have to do to start that process is say, I'm sorry for the mistakes that I've made. Would you be in my life now and change me so I can live for you for the rest of my days? And this is why it's such good news. And if you want to find out more, hit the link in the description and I'll see you next time.